Sean's and Pickles. I'm sure it's done the record keeping. Uh, so I'm here to talk just to give you a quick update on the review, the legislative review of the State Records Act that's currently underway. Um, the principal responsible officer for the review, Emma Harris, who is substantively stronger than the record keeping team, sort of made this thing as she's on the lady. Everyone's memories. Uh, in April 2018, the Ministers for Arts and the Minister for Finance, Services and Property wrote to the Premier about transitioning uh, the State Records Act um, you know, and, and its enabling body, which is the State Archives and Records Authority, um, from Department of Finance, Services and Innovation over to Department of Planning and Environment, where Create New South Wales was situated. So Create New South Wales was out of all the arts and infrastructure investment. Um, you know, and we had called cultural institutions. So that went there. Um, and as part of that agreement, they agreed a proposed joint review of the Act um, to make sure that it's current, you know, and it's enabling the right things, given how much um, how much change and digital disruption has been in the space. Um, so Create New South Wales are uh, leading the review and collaborating with um, the Department of Now Customer Service. Um, there's a steering committee that's there um, due to all of the model disruption. We now have a new chair, um, so that's slowed the timeline down a little bit, so that's just background for you. Um, so what the team has been doing as part of their review um, is, is meeting with, with a lot and like a lot underscore you know and involved um, of stakeholders um, for a range of different operations. The people who are really familiar with with the act and how it gets operationalized and, and issues that arise. You know, so that um, includes uh, accountability agencies like ICAC, the Audit Office, the Ombudsman, IPC, uh, obviously State Archives and Records Authority, um, and a lot of um, you know, advisory groups, uh, ours, ones from DE, FSI, now Customer Services, um, you know, and, and big bodies like Australian Society of Archivists uh, as well, you know, to try and get all of the issues, you know, what are the, what are the things that are coming up that may cause issues in retrospect. Um, so, along with all of that, all of that preliminary consultation we're doing to, to build up a, um, a landscape for review of all of the issues uh, that have arisen, are arising, or could possibly arise in the future, um, we're also doing a lot of research and comparative assessments, some of us other spoke globally and locally. Uh, you know, to try and figure out what are the strengths and weaknesses of the other acts and how to operationalised and you know what should the regulatory stance be, you know, what are the benefits. Um, the product of all of this consultation and research is a draft issue paper. So uh, as a quick review, to give you an oversight of some of the critical issues that the issues paper is highlighting. Um, so the purpose and structure of the act. One of those. Um, so, unlike some other uh, more legislation, the State Records Act doesn't have any uh, doesn't have any um, objectives. It's only explicit objectives in terms of what it's supposed to achieve or how it's supposed to achieve. But, so, you know, in terms of in terms of modern legislative practice, you know, we see that as, as holding it back, right? So, in terms of you know directing how it should be interpreted. Um, so, so there is issues around. So, I guess it's been developments in legislative drafting, which weren't enacted for the State Records Act, which have cut since come into play, things that are more policy-based um, and more discreet uh, regime for how it should be interpreted and how the regulation should support it, and then the policies um, and standards below that, so how it should all interact. So that's all being reviewed, it's got some proposals. Uh, the second critical issue um, is around the scope of the Act, so it's got a very wide very wide scope, which encompasses all records in all formats. Um, for any, you know, for any public offer, you know, so public office, and the definition of public office is pretty broad and been established for a public purpose. So it's really broad. It's not necessarily clear um, in its interpretation all the time. Um, and there's a lot of there's been a lot of changes, you know, certainly over the last two decades or so in terms of how government services are delivered, utilizing not for profit, not for profits, not for non-government entities. Um, private service providers, you know, um, instead of traditional in-house things where all of that is controlled, there's a lot more, con you know, contracting out of those things. So, so there's been there's been a change in the environment there, um, which may not be indicated for uh, probably in the act, um, given how format neutral it is, um, you know, at least for a lot of misconceptions and, and issues with interpretation. Uh, 
compliance framework. So throughout all of this, so throughout the conversations Governor Rapper and Keeping are having with public officers, um, and it was good to see that it was mirrored in this piece of consultation as well that this um, this review team did. So public officers desire a greater uh, auditing of their record of keeping standards. Um, and they see that, they see that you know reporting on poor results might actually be a driver for investment in that particular space. So obviously with a a bigger concentration on frontline services from government, reducing back pass and our staff and, and looking for those efficiencies, you know, there, there is a view that record keeping sort of gets left behind in terms of in terms of that investment, in terms of new technologies that come out, you know, they're not necessarily invested in because they're not delivering very clear front of house and you know service improvements to the constituents of New South Wales. Um, so the authority has very limited powers to investigate non-compliance, uh, whether actual or alleged. Uh, so, so those sorts of issues can come up. Um, identification of records of enduring value. So, so this is you know identified through state archives, a fairly key function for the state archives and records authority. Um, but <coughs> determining which records should be kept as part of that enduring memory, the act is largely silent on. So in terms of developing that documentary heritage, it's not really clear, there's a lot of interpretation, um, so obviously there, there could be improvements made there. I say obviously, it's not really obvious. Um, there could be improvements made there. We'll see what comes out. Um, and um, the fifth one, so public access, uh, is something that State Archives and Records Authority struggles with um, a lot in terms of, uh, just I guess in terms of Changing practice over time, what the legislation states, what public officers see as their requirement, and you know to, to provide information. So effectively, um, so yeah. So records in the open access period are closed to public access unless a public office makes an open access an open to public access direction. This doesn't always happen. Although it's part of our transfer standards moving forward, that those. Things need to happen, although there's nothing preventing people from serving very long periods, and there's not really any method for mediating or arbitrating that decision. Um, so there's some issues there could be improved, you know, and I think in an era where um, you know a lot of that information is readily available from you know, you know people's expectations, the public's expectation that those records are available online and instantly, um, there's a lot of work to do in that space uh, to improve that to meet public expectations. I think these are just some of the expectations of digital disruption has changed over time. So what's next? So recent machinery government changes have complicated some aspects with moving up portfolios and, and the steering committee chairs disappearing and being reassigned to new people who have no idea of the background. Um, which is you know, the pain in the neck. Um, but effectively that issue paper is currently with um, Minister of the Arts for review. So broadly, all of the issues that the issues paper have been broken up into a few buckets, um, and the Minister along with that steering committee is reviewing what needs to be progressed and in what format. So the same treatment for the different buckets of issues require a bit, so there's different treatments for each bucket broadly. Um, <coughs> yes. So that's it. Does everyone feel roughly informed on the review? <laughs> <laughs>